How's it going? It's Wednesday, that means it's WebDM. I'm Jonathan Pruitt and this is Jim Davis and today we're going to be talking about seven foot tall spellcasting tiger men and the human face snakes that love them. Let's get to it. Okay, Jim, we're going to go kind of Hindu Buddhist with it. All right. Rakshasa. What do you like about the Rakshasa? It's an evocative monster that often gets overlooked in terms of its potential as a villain or its potential to sort of confound the party with various tricks and traps and deceptions. Conceptually, I, I've always kind of liked animal-man hybrid kind mm -hmm. of monsters. There's something wild and dangerous. Mm -hmm. and, and Not necessarily a brony, but you're, you know. Yeah, definitely not a brony, but you know, I grew up with like the Disney cartoons where they're all anthropomorphized. So yeah. I, I, like, I like that kind of stuff. Anyway, totally. so I would say that what what's good about them in terms of them being a monster that DMs can use is they have a whole grab bag of odd powers and immunities that you can really confound the party with. And in yep. some editions of D&D, if you don't have the right weapon or even the right person using the right weapon, then you're just screwed. You can't, you can't take them on. Might as well just run. You might as well just run. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that in terms of, of being a monster that is different, that the players might not be expecting, or that they won't immediately, is it a were tiger? Is it a demon tiger thing? You know, mm -hmm. what is it? Yeah. Uh, that's a really great way to throw in the monster. Good for mid-level campaigns. They're a recurring villain because it's difficult to kill them. They've got spells that can always come back. And just their whole MO mm -hmm. is deception. Maybe they are have set themselves up in a city somewhere and are part of some sort of seedy underbelly kind of like thieves guild situation or a weird kind of cult that they've formed around themselves and it's like slowly as the players peel back the layers of this Rakshasa's deceptions they've they uncover the true nature of what's going on the infernal nature of it as sort of a tiger demon thing mm -hmm. and um, I don't know just different right so now you said um that they have like an odd grab bag of powers. Right. And that can throw off some DMs. So how, how as a DM do you handle like utilizing that batch of powers that you can, that you have access to? Yeah, so first off, like with any monster, but particularly ones um, that have spell casting and a bunch of different immunities, what you want to do is just be very familiar with your monsters. Read over the monster manual entry before you run the encounter. The day of the, the session, make sure you go back to the page in the monster manual. What is it saying? You know, reading it at the last minute might give you new adventure ideas or help formulate uh, plans that you can improvise with during actual play. In terms of actually running the monster, it might be handy not just to write out the stats on a separate sheet of paper, but like make note cards out of them. Here are all their defensive abilities, here are all their offensive abilities. Something you could just look at at a glance, has everything you need, so that you don't have to go flipping back through the book while you're actually playing. And this goes for dragons that can cast spells or certain types of outsiders like angels or demons and devils that have a bunch of different powers that it can sometimes be you know, too easy to lose track of in play. Let's slither on towards the Naga. Yeah. What, what's, your, what's your favorite, because there are three different types. Three different types, what yeah. Do you what do you like about it? I like the Guardian Naga, the good aligned Naga. Yeah, uh, if, if only because the players aren't going to expect it. <laughs> to be potentially helpful. They might initially see it and it's like, is this a monster? So there could be a few rounds of accidental combat mm -hmm. or at least tension as they try to figure out what in the hell is this thing? Right. Why in the world is it here? Is it friendly? Is it not? And then even a good aligned creature like the Naga because it's so alien and different from the elves, dwarves, humans, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. It might not necessarily be immediately helpful. Or right. you might, the party might have to prove itself to the Naga in oh. order to, um, you know, sort of gain whatever trust it has or powers mm -hmm. that it can bestow on the party. And I like them because I like snake monsters, like mm -hmm. in the same way that I like the Yonti and certain types of dragons, because it's got that Conan the Barbarian, Thulsa Doom kind of feel to it. It's just sort of... Mm -hmm. weird and but at the same time very natural because you're using animals as a way to project the monstrousness of the monster right if it makes any sense yeah yeah similar to Roxasha's uh, or Shasa's they've got uh, a weird grab bag of powers that you've got mm -hmm. to stay on top of mm -hmm. to, to really run them to the best of their uh, potential right but but they're also physically Capable, yeah, right. Like, yeah, yeah. As far as like, not you know, you don't want to forget about that. The, the 
the no. physicality of the monster themselves. Oh, no. In terms of the Naga, what, where is it layering? What's it? What's its environment look like? These things are bigger than any natural looking snake. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is it? it? Maybe they find a, a gigantic snake skin somewhere in a dark forest before they encounter uh, one of the more evil aligned Nagas. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they find um, just enemies that have suffered massive doses of poison as they're making their medicine and health checks or nature checks to determine mm -hmm. like how did this creature die only to realize like whatever's out there is a gigantic poisonous snake right. that we don't want it touching us we don't want to get anywhere near it oh and it also casts spells right and it, it also and can talk and you can't kill it it will keep coming back and fighting you mm -hmm. and it's just this terrifying monster that can really serve as a good mid-level villain for a campaign. Now, do you prefer the more human-faced Naga or the newer where it's more towards the actual back to the snake? That's one thing I really, that kind of freaked me out about Nagas is, you know. Yeah, I, I like the ones that they juxtapose the, the animal and the human. Mm -hmm. So I like the ones that have a, a face that is very human and maybe it's the teeth or the eyes that give it away. Maybe they have a forked tongue. Mm -hmm. um, for our watchers, watchers who are familiar with the Conan story, the god in the bowl, Mm -hmm. That last monster, that thing that pops up out of the uh, out of the the bowl, reminds me of a naga, in that it's just this weird serpentine thing, but it has a very familiar face, and you know we're prone to recognizing faces and things, and anything that has a human face but a monstrous body is always gonna. I'm always it's always got a place at my table. I yeah. love it because these creatures are, have such a diverse array of powers. As a player, <clears throat> yeah. what do you suggest uh, a party does to prepare themselves to fight one of these two monsters? It used to be a hell of a lot harder to kill these things. Because what was it? You had to have a crossbow blessed by a cleric with a plus one or arrow or something. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It was nuts. But now, I mean, you just need a good aligned person to shoot a crossbow, right? Or even just a spear. Or just, just a gonna... spear. It just has to be piercing damage, right? Just make sure you're, you have a cleric. Uh, one thing is important to counter their spell casting so you can get in there. I think just having having that counter spell, mm -hmm. counter spell, counter spell, counter spell. Have that ready. Right. Don't don't shake the table or you'll knock the minis over. Sorry. You know, don't use those spell slots for something else when you can do a counter spell because you know the last thing you want is the, for that rock Sasha to really start messing with your party uh, mm -hmm. and then slip away. Well, it's like, what else are you going to do with your spells? They have that limited spell immunity where yes. they're shrugging off lower level magic. So you might as well save mm -hmm. some of those slots or some of that um, some of that spell casting power right. to kind of shut them down. Yeah, you got to shut them down and let let your fighters fight. Yeah, and uh, you know, I think I think you're going to be okay if yeah. you, if you just stick to that. We need to fight a rock shasa. We haven't yet. Well, what's up with that, man? I don't know. Maybe it's coming down the pipe. Okay, cool. Now we ask this sometimes, but um. What if I wanted to play a Rakshasa in your campaign? Ooh, wow, okay. Like maybe I just have a hand thing, maybe I want to flip my hands and I just sure. want to play that out and see how it works. Sure. I mean, mechanically speaking, I might look at the monster and try to break it down. What are the essential elements of the monster? Is it spell casting ability innate? Is it something mm -hmm. that's learned? Uh, I might go to the Were Tiger and I might see what does a Were Tiger PC look like and how can I use that as a model for making a Rakshasa character. I might also dip into a little bit of fourth edition and use some of the lore that surrounded the Rakshasa there where they are kind of corrupted angelic spirits mm -hmm. who have you know, somehow been caught. Is the player wanting to play off of that? How are they going to play a creature that's normally like a demonic or sort of infernal spirit trapped mm -hmm. in a corporeal body? How are we gonna make that work? If it's an evil campaign, I'm all about it. That'd be a great monster for an yeah. evil campaign because it's just a way to add something new and different mm -hmm. to the game. If, if they're wanting to be in a more conventional campaign with more conventional races, it might be something that they accept being a lower powered version of the Rakshasa or even the Naga for that matter. And in terms of maybe having it be like a specialized path for yeah. whatever class that they choose, with yeah. powers that kind of key off the themes of the mm -hmm. monsters. Maybe as, they're, as they level up, uh, where normally you would get those ability increases at fourth, eighth, twelfth, whatever, yeah. you, you instead turn that into like spell-like abilities or class, like character abilities. Like, Absolutely, Where you yeah. start giving them the abilities of it at those levels instead, like they forfeit their right to ability increase or feats. Yeah. But hey, you're gonna get that ability to 
whatever. Kind of like how they div divided up uh, monsters into class levels for third edition. Right. Where it's like you let the player choose do they want to focus more on what their class lets mm -hmm. them offer or lets them have mm -hmm. or more of what the monster lets them have and let them mix and match as they'd like. They look monstrous. Are, are they inherently evil though? I mean, according to current D&D lore, yes. Yeah. Uh, they are sort of devilish, infernal spirits mm -hmm. that have been let loose under the world and take this particular feline form. You can always tell them by their weird, backwards-shaped hands. And I don't know, you know, it would be nice to ask Wizards of the Coast, can we get a good picture of what a Rakshasa really looks like with the hands? Because I feel like we haven't really seen a good picture. Mm -hmm. If any of our watchers have a really good picture out there, it'd be great if they could point us to a link. Them being infernal creatures is sort of a roadblock to them being player characters, but at the same time, it shouldn't mean that the answer is always no, you can't play these kinds of monsters. Yeah. As I mean, even in 1974, it's suggested that, you know, if the players wanted to play a dragon or some other monster, that the DM try to find a way to let that happen. Right, right. And so, mostly it's just a matter of uh, trade-offs. Well, about? yeah, I mean, you know, because Drist, anybody can, you know, Sure. And it's sometimes fun to just play a monster. Yeah. To just it, open the monster mail and go, I want to be that guy. Yeah, we should do a campaign where we do that. That'd be really fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks again for watching WebDM. Be sure to click the subscribe button, and also, if you want to head over to Facebook, you can check out Jim's inspiration list for his campaign coming up. We're going to have new ones every Wednesday. Tell your friends. Come back next week.